My sister discovered a universal language, but she hasn't spoken a word since 2003. My sister is a genius. When she was about 13 she made this device that honestly still blows my mind. I spent my entire life studying physics and I still don't know what she did, or how, which is probably for the best considering how this all played out. I don't know how she did it, but what I do know is in the summer of 2003 the laws governing matter and atomic mass didn't seem to affect her anymore. She was invisible to the human eye, and she was speaking a universal language we've never been able to identify or reproduce. Before I get into this, though, have you ever seen Firefly? Allow me to quote, I am very smart. I went to the best Medicaid in Osiris, top 3% of my class, finished my internship in 8 months. Gifted is the term. So when I tell you that my little sister makes me look like an idiot child, I want you to understand my full meaning. This could have been written about me and my sisters. We come from a long line of gifted people. My father is a neurologist, my mother works for SpaceX, and my eldest sister is an artist whose work has been featured in galleries since she was 12. I'm a full-time research associate of high-energy density physics at a university I can't name without risking my career. And, like Simon Tam from Firefly before me, I don't tell you all of this to flaunt our intelligence or to make us look special. I tell you this so you can fully understand what I mean when I say Neurali made us all look like idiot children. In 2003 I was about to turn 17. My interests weren't like most teen girls, so I won't bore you with the details of what I found more entertaining than TV, books, or the mall, but more often than not I was occupied with personal research projects. The first time Nerali made herself invisible I was in the middle of a research rabbit hole. I was deep into some really heady academic articles when I heard Nerali pipe up behind me. They're wrong, you know. I groaned inwardly. We'd had the knocking talk, but she was still so bad at respecting boundaries. Nerali, what did we say about knocking? Oh, she said, and sounded genuinely surprised. I didn't think about the door. What? I frowned and spun my chair around to look at her. My room was empty. Wait, empty. I looked around briefly before rubbing my eyes, wondering when I'd slept last and already writing the conversation off as an auditory hallucination. Shaking my head, I started to turn back to my computer when I heard her giggle. All right, jerk hole. Where are you? Right here. She giggled, her voice coming from directly in front of me. What the how? Did you hide the speakers again? I stood up, taking a moment to really look around the room. She pulled a prank like this before, hiding a complex set of speakers she'd modified to create a confluence of sound she could manipulate. It would sound like someone was anywhere in the room she specified. She'd even made it sound like she was moving around. It was really impressive, especially since she'd only been 10 at the time. This time, though, she'd either gotten much better at hiding the speakers or something else was going on. She giggled again. No speakers. Just me. Okay, just me. But how? I folded my arms, looking in the direction of her disembodied voice. That's going to be hard to explain. That was Nerali for you won't get it. Try me, I said, because I'm stubborn. She did, though, and I didn't. I had the beginnings of a migraine chewing on my right eye by the time she was done. Almost none of it made sense. There was something about atomic frequencies, and post-dimensional drift, superliminal desynchronization, and something she dubbed the Planck supertemporal parallel. It was all way over my head. Okay, I said, rubbing my temple as I tried to digest it all. But how did you get here? I walked, infuriating. I mean, how did you get in here? I gestured widely to the door, which was closed, and the walls around us. Oh, I could hear the shrug in her voice. I just walked where the walls weren't. I squinted at the spot I thought she was standing. You, what? She sighed. It was a special sigh. It was the kind of side that told you someone much smarter than you was put out at having to dumb something down enough for you to understand. An embarrassed heat flooded my cheeks. I knew she was smarter than me, smarter than all of us, but it still made me feel like I failed simple math in front of Neil deGrasse Tyson and a puppy, and they were both disappointed. I walked where the walls weren't. The walls aren't everywhere, Divya. In fact, in most places, like, realities, the walls aren't there at all. So I just walked in those places. I wanted to see the proofs of this statement, though I knew she wouldn't have bothered writing them down except in scraps and in complete snippets that only made sense to her. I also knew the proofs wouldn't make any more sense than her original explanation. Even so, it bothered me that I only understood what she meant in the vaguest, most conceptual way. It wasn't natural for me. That abstractness of thought warred with the linear way of my brain making actual understanding impossible and I hated it. Sana would have understood. Her brain worked that way, but not mine. I must have looked like I was struggling with it, because she continued on. Where I am, or technically when and how, everything is a Schrodinger's puzzle of is and isn't. All I have to do is observe the places where the state of something isn't and go there. This wasn't helping. I mean, it was, I got the basic concept of what she was saying, but in terms of the practical application of physics it was a mess of meaningless sciencey buzzwords. Nothing she said had any foundation in known science. She could have told me I ate ice cream upside down and chanted purple backwards 30 times and the wall turned to jello, but only as long as I looked at it from a 45 degree angle, and it would have been exactly as scientifically sound as what she'd actually said. Yet she was the one who was invisible, so the limits of my understanding and science itself had no bearing on her corporeal existence. Do you still have a body? I mean, can you see you? Oh yeah, she said, her voice pitched higher in excitement. I look like a hundred versions of me laid on top of each other, looking at my hands and stuff is kinda trippy, but I'm here. Cool. I had no idea what to do with this information. She started giggling again. What now? I can't believe you haven't noticed yet. Noticed what? I couldn't keep the flash of irritation out of my voice. It wasn't easy to accept the premise that she'd managed to trick physics into letting her pass through matter while being imperceptible to the human eye, but I'd had just about all the how much dumber than Neurali are you I could take for one day. What language am I speaking? I had to blink at that and think a moment. It's English, isn't it? She giggled again. Say something, I ordered in my most authoritative big sister voice. Nor again is there anyone who loves or pursues or desires to obtain pain of itself, because of his pain, but because occasionally circumstances occur in which toil and pain can procure him some great pleasure. If I concentrated, I could tell the words as she was saying didn't quite match what I was apparently translating in my head, but I couldn't hear them for what they were. Except, wait, is that the lorem ipsum translation from the finibus bonorum et malorum? She giggled again. Yep, want me to try something in Hindi? Yeah, I said, a little stunned and more than a little curious. Go for it. May he in whose lap shines forth the daughter of the mountain king, who carries the celestial stream on his head, on whose brow rests the crescent moon, whose throat holds poison and whose breast is support of a huge serpent, and who is adorned by the ashes on his body, may that chief of gods, the lord of all, the destroyer of 
of the universe, the omnipresent Shiva, the moon like Sankara, ever protect me. I frowned, torn between focusing on the words and trying to identify what she was quoting. I started mouthing some of the words as my mind ran back over them, and got the little as recognition settled in. Did you just quote the Ramsar at Mana's Aedia Kand invocation? Another giggle. But, how? That didn't sound like Hindi at all. Fascinating, she said. It didn't feel like Hindi when I said it, but I was thinking the Hindi words. What did it sound like to you? English, I guess. I mean, it didn't sound like anything, but I understood you in English. That's so cool. Can you actually hear something other than English? Kinda. I mean, almost. If I try I can tell the sounds you're making don't match the meaning of the words I'm not hearing, but understanding. But the meaning overrides everything else so I can't actually identify individual sounds or phrases. Do you think you could identify the physical linguistics if we went word by word? Then maybe the processing of complete phrases prevents the identification of individual phonemes. Maybe, I said, shrugging, still trapped in all of this aspect of her discovery. We could try it. She had me run her through some general object identification to give me a chance to listen for the sounds she was making and how they differed from the words I knew. The words I was hearing, but I only ever caught the ghosts of divergent beginnings and ends. She thought this was hilarious. I thought it was magical. She started making regular trips to my room in this state, usually after lights out or when our parents were at work. I didn't blame her for sneaking. Sana wasn't into the science stuff, and if our parents knew what we'd been up to we'd have been grounded for life, especially since Nirali had already been banned from experimental projects at home. But someone had to try and catalog this universal lexicon and this was the only way we had access to it. One night, as we lay awake on the floor naming objects, Nirali froze. I couldn't see her, of course, but something changed. She still to the point I worried she'd maybe phase through the floor or something and left me alone. But somehow I still felt her presence along with something sharp and alien I couldn't identify. Nirali, I whispered, cold and settling on me like snow. SHH. It was her, but so quiet I almost missed it. I felt the urgency behind it, though, and hushed to wait in the silence with her. As the seconds ticked by a prickling dread crawled across the room. It started at the edges where the shadows were thickest and spread outward, tainting everything it touched including me. My pulse quickened as a primal paranoia sank in. I knew it was just Nirali and me, but it felt like a predator was stalking the shadows, searching for us, and it was only our silence that kept it from pouncing.